Hey, how's it going guys? Jack and Matt here with the Toaster Bros. And what if I told you that inside of this box, we have a PC that is going to be better than most of the PCs we've ever reviewed on this channel. This little Intel Nook features a 12th Gen i9 and a 3080 Ti. We're gonna talk about it here in a second, but first, a word from today's sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by Team Group and their Cardea Zero Z440 Gen 4 SSD, featuring capacities of one and two terabytes, read and write speeds of up to 7,400 megabytes per second, and even a graphene heat spreader to improve heat dissipation by up to 9%. We love using Team Group SSDs for all our budget and high-end gaming PC builds, and so should you. Consider picking up the Cardea Zero Z440 SSD by clicking the link in the description down below. And special thanks again to Team Group for sponsoring today's video. So big thanks to Intel for sending over this Nook right here for us to take a peek at. Also, by the way, we absolutely love the packaging, looks super cool, and hopefully that gets passed down to the end user. But basically, this Nook is a bare bones product, but Intel is nice enough to really hook us up. And obviously there is other companies that will buy these and then put aftermarket parts in them for you, so you don't have to do it yourself. So we'll leave links down below to places where you can buy this Nook and um, a bunch of different variations that you can buy and check those links before you do. But uh, it helps us not waste any more time it open this thing up. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so we got this nice magnetic front right here. Kind of reminds me of like an N60H1. It's kind of like that size to give you a real life reference, a little bit smaller. This is an actual Windows 10 install. This thing's of course gonna be Windows 11 ready as well. Honestly, I don't know why I didn't have Windows 11 out of the box, but I'm not gonna complain. I mean, this is a pretty cool, product. That is actually a Founders Edition 3080 Ti. So there's definitely a lot of performance packed inside this tiny little box. What's the most astonishing to me is that the whole system is about the size of like what I expect the graphics card to be. You can really tell that they crammed it lengthwise. I mean, there's only maybe two to three extra inches um, back here lengthwise. And then width is probably where they squeezed in the board, the storage and all the other stuff. I mean, you see the motherboard IO here. You maybe have a total of like, probably like what, 12 inches right there. Mm -hmm. No, this is probably about- That's big. Right. Probably about three to four inches total width from the graphics card. I mean, it's pretty insane. We have a standard power adapter, which I really appreciate. I would be kind of upset if they made you use some weird proprietary power brick. And then on the front, we literally just get a power button. I don't really know what's up with this right here. It's interesting. It has, uh, it looks like little um, hex heads on it. So I don't know if that's like for storage, maybe? We'll have to open that up. And we really need to open the whole thing up to kind of check it out. Um, yeah, I mean, 12th gen i9. That's pretty should, crazy. I think you should power it on because I know what it does. Oh, like, you know, like that front piece? does something? It does something. No way. Does it move? <laughs> oh, that's so cool. Dude, that's like crazy because I honestly couldn't even see like an outline or anything from it. And I, I should have known this because Intel Nooks do usually have this really cool logo. I really don't know where they got it from, but it's super cool. It's we RGB. Got, we underglow. literally have like underglow on both sides. I mean, this is actually really cool. Let's go to the underside and see where that glow. Oh, that's clean. We got these really nice strips here. It looks like it has three like 90 millimeter fans up top, which is pretty impressive. They crammed those in there too. What do we think? Do we want to- We should open it up. You want to open it up? Yeah. I'm scared. I think you can this do This is it. expensive, I'm scared. So first thing I'm gonna go ahead and do before I even like get into actually like opening the whole thing up is we wanna see like what things are easily, I just noticed this, here's a button right here. I didn't see one on the front, so I mean the. So that's a M.2 expansion? I see absolutely nothing. I'm not totally sure what that is. How this thing works as Jackson tries to open up the rest of the uh, well, case is there is a compute unit inside, which is basically, it looks like a graphics card in itself. It's in what looks like a PCI slot um, and it holds the RAM, CPU, and I believe storage. We'll get that out in a minute to look at it, but that's how they make this thing so compact. It's not like your traditional motherboard. Um, in theory, you can upgrade that compute unit, I believe if you open it up and well, obviously, cause you can add the RAM and storage and stuff, but I believe the CPU is soldered. So I think that's where the one limitation would be. And I think that's just a back frame. Yeah, just like a, I mean, there's some more screws in here, so I guess we'll keep going. Unless I can find screws elsewhere. Is it like slide off now, maybe? Oh, yep, okay, we got one off. All right, there we go. It looks like that's, that's our power, power supply. supply. Yeah. Very cute, just like a, almost like a uh, small form factor power supply. It might even be standard. Definitely doesn't give us much. Oh, here we do actually have. Let's go ahead and make sure before I say this again, I think that's actually an M.2. Okay, yeah, there, I, I really thought there was an <laughs> M.2. I'm there. like, are you serious? Yeah, there actually is an M.2. It's it's kind of weird. It almost looks like it wouldn't work very well because normally they have pins that are like springy, but these ones are flat on the board. But I mean, it's standard and it says M.2.1, um, so it, it should be an, an, an expansion expansion slot. Um, so I guess now we got to keep trying to get at this thing. Yep. Okay, we got, the, okay, that side, yeah. So there's the GPU. I mean, yeah, you really could if there's <laughs> any, uh, any scalpers out there. Um, yeah, this is a standard reference model uh, 3080 Ti. It's actually using um, the adapter that it needs to use. And I mean, from here, it looks like it wouldn't be too bad to get in here. Here's our three fans up top. 
Um, it looks like for the graphics card, we basically just take, uh, this just pops out actually. So the card, I guess I can probably just get to this point mm -hmm. and pop this out. Maybe. We're learning as we go. No, we really, oh, there's a screw back here. Okay, screw back here. And here comes our PCI line. And I guess you could pull out the motherboard like this technically. And then you basically just take these two screws here out. What we'll do here, since this is the point where we're gonna take this thing basically apart, is we'll go ahead and yeah. get some games installed, do some testing on it. And for the final shots, we'll show you what everything looks like on the inside. Once we know it works, and we actually get our footage of it. That's so, a good point, because we don't want to break it before we even start the video. Yeah, so let's go ahead and do that and uh, go from there. All right, guys, now that we have this Intel Nook all booted up and ready to go, let's dive into some benchmarks real quick. Now, we decided to test this PC in a handful of titles, those being Apex Legends, Fortnite, Warzone, and Cyberpunk. Now, first up in Apex Legends, we tested all games at 1440p, by the way. On pretty much high settings, we got 200 plus FPS. But we start to see some of the flaws of a very compact, high-end gaming PC like this. Those CPU temps were definitely in the high 80s most of the time, and there were times where for a split second it hit 100 degrees. It was probably when the CPU boosted up real quick for like high performing like instant tasks that it will do going up to like 4.8 4.9 gigahertz but when it does do that it does get kind of hot so that's something to keep in mind when you're getting really compact with these high performing PC parts things are going to run a little bit toasty but I do believe it's well within spec the clock speed did go down when it did hit that temperature so with a little bit of adjustment here and there you'll have no problem still maintaining some solid temperatures. Next up in Fortnite at 1440p, using epic view distance, everything else on low, we got 200 plus FPS. And there were some times we reached 300. There were a little bit of stutters here and there, but it ended up settling itself out after you drop into the map and everything loaded in. This is where we're really relying on that i9-12900 IPC, which 12th gen Intel, it's very powerful, and getting 300 plus FPS is pretty impressive still. Now, of course, if you want to run on higher details in Fortnite, you will definitely be pushing that 3080 Ti more, and you'll probably get close to the same frame rate and have some more visual appealing details, but uh, most people who play esports titles are going to run lower settings anyway, just so they can get the maximum frame rate to run on a high refresh rate display. Next up in Warzone on pretty much medium high settings, once again, the default settings that were selected when we booted into, well, Warzone. At 1440p, we got 800 plus FPS. This PC with a 3080 Ti will have no problem whatsoever playing pretty much anything you throw at it. It has the 32 gigs of RAM. As you can tell, Warzone is eating up the RAM, getting up to like 17 or 18 gigabytes of usage. So definitely get a system with 32 gigs of RAM if you're gonna be playing high settings Warzone and you want the best frame rate. But if you're gonna get this bare bones and put something like, uh, 3060 or uh, 16 gigs of RAM in it, I think it'll probably run a little bit more optimal because I think temperatures do play a decent part here and getting some slightly lower end hardware might actually mitigate some of the temperature issues and clock speed lowering because of temperature issues that you might see with the current configuration that we have right now. I still do think these things are really cool and they're definitely an experimental product from Intel. They always make these nooks to pretty much showcase their top of the line CPUs in a compact form factor pretty much every generation. So it's really cool that we actually got our hands on this one because this one looked really appealing in the photos I saw before I reached out to Intel to get a sample. And the last game, of course, we had to test was Cyberpunk at 1440p using ultra ray tracing because, of course, we got a 3080 Ti and using that built-in benchmark, we had an average of 97 FPS. So overall, this thing is very powerful. The specs would have told you that before you even saw any of the benchmarks, and it's a really cool piece of tech. It's very expensive, though, so I don't mind you all out there thinking that this is not worth picking up because it definitely has a hefty price point on it. But for those who want a really compact PC with no sacrifice in terms of performance or or wants to get the bare bones kit and put whatever hardware they have, I think it's a really cool piece of tech, a lot of awesome RGB, that's definitely a plus, and it's definitely something you should consider if you are in the market for a compact PC and don't wanna go through the headaches of building it yourself or having to buy parts off the shelf and make sure they work properly, Intel's got you covered with this one. So now we finished the benchmarking section of today's video, I'm gonna bring Jackson back in here to wrap this video up real quick. All right, guys, so we've actually been kind of debating the whole price of this thing because you really can't just buy it with the 3080 Ti pre-installed unless you go to like an aftermarket manufacturer. And those are pretty non-existent so far because this is, well, the Nook 12, it's very brand new. So we basically calculated that with the i9 and like the bare bones, nothing else in it, you're already looking at about 1600 after tax and shipping. Add that RTX 3080 Ti that you can hopefully get an MSRP, you know, or plus a little bit extra around a thousand bucks. 
And on top of that, you gotta add RAM storage. We're thinking a little under 3K. So overall, it's a very unique product. Intel releases these pretty much every generation just to showcase some of their top of the line CPUs. And I think it's a really cool piece of tech. Most people out there won't buy it or have the opportunity to buy it, but we just wanted to show you guys what this thing looks like. And if you wanna learn more about it, check the link down below. And special thanks again to Intel for sending this thing over and allow us to see what their 12th gen architecture can do inside such a compact little case. So as always, we hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, check out our other two YouTube channels and also our twitch.tv slash Toasty Bros and do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye. So although we're gonna be trading this PC for a car, stay tuned for the channel so you can figure that out, we do sell lots of other gaming computers and tablets and laptops and other things. PCBros.tech is where we sell gaming PCs, laptops, and everything else that Jackson just said at good prices. And if you use code ToastyBros2 on checkout, you can save 2% for you Toasty Bros viewers out there. You're awesome. Buy PCs from us, PCBros.tech. See you guys later, goodbye.